station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? We're ready for the event. Boston Public Radio. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. That's, That's our, our call. call. Go ahead, station. This is Boston. Station, this is Boston, Boston Public, Public Radio. Radio. You hear us? Got you loud and clear. Oh, good. And in any case, that is the voice of oh, Sunita Williams. <laughs> Zooming around planet Earth. Well, she's up in the International Space Station. I shouldn't say it. Sunny uh, is a NASA astronaut and commander of Expedition 72 aboard the International Space Station, part of the Starliner crew. You all know this whose original eight-day mission has become an eight-month mission. I don't want to say she's stuck up there, but she's there for a while, <laughs> and she is stuck talking with us. And, Sonny, not only do I want to welcome you, and she asked that we not call her commander, but, Sonny, <laughs> I want you to know, when I was in college, I had the exact same hair that you do now. Is that incredible? Yeah. This is I love it. Look at her hair. Oh hey, Jim. God. Hi, Marjorie. I love it. Look at her. Hi there, Sonny. Oh we are so thrilled to talk to you, and I do love your hair. That's what zero gravity does. You don't have to worry about curls or brushes or anything else, right? Don't worry about curls or brushes or anything else, right? It's got a lot of body, and I, I like it, and it's a, it's, a, it's a free car to be a little bit wild, so it's, it's good. I like it. So, Sonny, when we first heard, and I remember a while ago, that you were not coming home in eight days, that you were going to be coming home in eight months, I thought, oh, my, my God. But I, I, you're, you know, you're a trained person, and um, I'm not. But I do wonder how it felt watching the Boeing Starliner head back to Earth with you not on it. What was that like? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. You know, it hits at the... I think the the emotion part of the whole equation, right? So we we knew as the summer was progressing on that there was a lot of discussions going on, and you know our our fate was going to be decided. Um, so it sort of played out slowly, and the the decision um, finally came, and uh, and. I think we were ready for it just because it took a little while to get there and get the data and try to understand exactly what the problems were. But just like you hit on, you know, when you see your ship flying away, it's a little heart wrenching. And uh, knowing that, you know, that's what we trained to do, that's what we were supposed to do, and that's where we wanted to be uh, in that spacecraft coming home. But, um, you know, the decision was made, and it was a great decision. We stand by our leadership for asking everybody their opinions and making sure we had all the T's crossed and I's dotted to make sure we made the right decision. And so uh, eight months, it's okay. We're professional astronauts. We were trained uh, for every contingency uh, to live up here, so we're here. By the way, it was a huge disclosure, Sonny, by Marjorie a minute ago that she is not an astronaut. All of us thought she was until a couple of minutes ago. Wow, That's that right. is incredible. Sonny, I don't know if you can turn around. Not only am I looking at you, but I'm looking at the sky behind you. What do we see behind you through the craft? Yeah, we're over the Atlantic Ocean, and I, I sort of wish we were talking about uh, maybe 10 minutes ago. We flew right over northern New England. It was a little cloudy, oh. but I was mentioning to my friends uh, and all the, pe oh. all the peepers out there, the trees are starting to turn <laughs> reddish. It's not so green. Cape Cod, was, Cape Cod was clear as a bell. It's where my sister and her kids live, so it's, uh, it was beautiful. But right now we're over the Atlantic, and we be coming, we'll be coming up on Africa before too long. We're talking to Commander Sonny Williams. You know, Sonny, I've heard a few interviews with you, and I, I love when I hear you talk about how much little Sonny Williams or cared about uh, science and how much it meant to you. We talk a lot on the show about how, I don't know if it's a movement, but there is a move away from science in large parts of the United States, whether it was COVID, whether it's climate. How much does that worry someone like you who does what you do and who grew up loving the field? You know, I, I'm not really entirely worried because I think all we can do is show people what science can do. And living up here on the International Space Station, you know, launching people and rockets to space to go live here, to right below me exercising in space, to talking to you while we're orbiting the planet 17,500 miles an hour. And when we could bring all that back home to people, they realize that 
there's science behind it all and the importance of it and I think people want to get involved so in my mind the best thing we could do is be good ambassadors good role models and get more people involved and in wanting to you know discover explore and that's how we get them back so when you're not working up there, you mentioned exercising in space. Um, she ran a marathon on a treadmill, yeah, by the way, the Boston right. Marathon. Yeah, you, you can run on a treadmill. And then I would assume you have some leisure time. I mean, can you watch like TV, you know, Housewives of New York or something? I mean, <laughs> what do you do when you're, when you're not working? Yeah, you know, there's a, a lot of things. We have uh, folks who are uh, behavioral health folks who make sure that, you know, we have com communications with our family and friends at home. Um, we also have, like, some favorite TV shows, particularly when I'm working out. Uh, All Creatures Great and Small was one of my favorites that I watch an episode while I'm riding the bike usually. Um, I listen to a bunch of TED Talks when I'm on the A-Red, so that's always good. You learn a little bit there. So, yeah, there's a lot of other entertainment up here that we have through our computer system and our, and our and great support people on the ground who make sure we have things that we like. I personally write a journal while I'm up here uh, as in part of my spare time. And, you know, look at the view. You know, you take a lot of pictures because you're up here checking out home and then checking out just real co cool formations of clouds, of water. You know, ice, you know, it's just so much to do, actually. I've never been bored while I've been on the space station. How many hours have you engaged in spacewalks, Sonny Williams? Um, I've been really lucky. On my first flight, we were putting together this amazing space station. So um, that construction work, as I call it, was uh, four spacewalks and my second flight, uh, was a little later, and a couple things broke outside, so we had to go out and do some repairs. So I've had um, seven spacewalks, about 50 hours of spacewalking. Can you describe, and maybe you can't, can you describe the feeling when you leave the spacecraft and you are, we've all seen these incredibly beautiful, striking moments. What does that feel like when you're the person doing it? Well, you know, we train a lot for these spacewalks, and there's a lot of people who are invested in it because it's very, you know, expensive equipment outside. And if we go outside, we're risking everybody's life, you know, these two people's lives to go out there and do that in their own specific spacecraft, their space suits, right? So um, we want to make sure we get it right. So I think the biggest thing uh, on our minds, each of us, is like, okay, do I know everything that I'm supposed to do? Am, am I communicating correctly? Am I ready to go and do the job? And I don't want to mess it up. You know, that's the part of the part of the first emotion. But I'll tell you, a six-hour spacewalk, I think you run through the gamut of every emotion a human can have. You know, you're hot, you're cold, you're crushing it, you're doing everything right, and then something that you didn't expect goes wrong, and then you're beating yourself up because that didn't go right. And then you have to go to the bathroom, and then you know that it's cold and it's hot again. You know, it's go. You go through the you go through the whole thing. And um, I've noticed that each time that I've come back in, it felt like I was skiing the whole day. You know, like that after ski feeling when you get done and you just sort of like chill out. You know, it's just sort of all every every piece of energy just comes out of you at the end of it. But while you're doing it, you're on cue. My mom, my mom sort of said like. It took me a little while to get out the airlock because I was gathering some equipment. She goes, did you get stuck in there? And I'm like, no, I didn't get stuck in there. I was making sure I had all my stuff together to get ready to go. It's important work, Mom. So it's uh, it's every emotion I think a human can have. We, we should mention your mom and dad are in Falmouth, I believe, right? And you spent many of your uh, uh, many years in Needham where Sunita L. Williams Elementary School is, is named after you. You've got a thing going on with the kids there. What's that about? Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was like, I think the, the hugest honor of my whole life, having an elementary school named after you. Like, whoa, this is nuts. But, you know, it was Hillside, and then it moved to an area where it wasn't on a hillside, so it needed a new name. And uh, the superintendent, Dan Gutekantz, called me up and said, um, hey, there was a vote, and we decided to have your name on the school. Will you accept it? And a, another astronaut friend of mine, Kevin Ford, goes, I'm not sure you should. Usually those names are people who are dead. But, but I said, well, this is such an amazing honor. Of course, I'll, I'll accept it. And, uh, you know, Needham is my hometown. It happens to be the Needham Rockets. I'm not sure if you guys know that or not, right? So it's just appropriately named. Um, and... Uh, and then, uh, so I've, I've been back there since, well, I've been there when the ground, after the groundbreaking, and then when it opened up, and then I try to go every year just to talk to the kids. 
um, there was a big dedication in 2019, and I'm trying to go and hopefully one day I'll be able to spend a week and um, give a little space course to maybe the fourth or fifth graders before they graduate from that school. That is the voice of Commander Sonny Williams. She's zooming in to us from the International Space Station. A lot of people are texting in, Sonny, asking, can you vote? We know the answer, but they don't. Can you, and how do you do it? Yeah, we actually there's a there's a couple of us up here who will, who will definitely be here, uh, Americans, to vote in November, and so uh, all of us have written in through our you know postal service to ask for permission to vote uh, absentee voting, and um, we actually have a voting booth up here. We're going to put that together, and we will vote, and our votes will come down through our space <laughs> network, and they'll all be counted. It's you know it's a civic duty. It's the right thing to do. So yes, we're all going to vote. Well. While we're up here. Now, I was going to ask you about the food. Like, what are you having for lunch today? So, great question. So, the food, um, you know, at one point, someday we'll be able to fly you around and show you everything, but the food is, our kitchen is pretty awesome. You know, we have hot and temperate water, which, and also then a free refrigerator. So if you want to make cold drinks, you put this temperate water in there, put it in the refrigerator. Hot drinks, you put hot water in, and we have coffee, we have tea, we have cocoa, um, all sorts of, you know, uh, flavored drinks like lemonade and apple cider. But for lunch, I had um, chicken strips with salsa and on a tortilla and a side of broccoli au gratin. So the food is pretty good. It's a, a pretty good selection. Um, all the different types of things, breakfast, dinner, uh, sides, vegetables, soups. So we have a lot. We have a lot of food up here. I will say, since Butch and I have been up here as extra people, we've been eating through a lot of the food. The space station program has been great to make sure that we're all well fed. Um, but we've been eating through a lot of food. But it, we're getting a resupply in uh, in uh, end of October. I hope so. Do you two like each other? And what happens when you're stuck in one of those things with yeah. somebody you don't like? I'm serious. Come An on. Astronaut spat. <laughs> I'm serious. How about it? Astronaut spat. How about it? So, you know, I'll just say this. Butch is from south of the Mason Dixon line. I'm from north of the Mason Dixon line. Somehow we get along pretty well together. We're we're uh, we're a good duo. We um we we uh you know, we capitalize on each other's strengths and skills. And so uh, you know, yeah, yes, of course, you know, my life depended on him, his life depended on me also to make the right decisions while we are in the Starliner spacecraft. While we're up here, if we end up getting to do a spacewalk, the same thing, our lives are depending on each other. So yeah, we trust each other. We, uh, I mean, he's got a great sense of humor. So, um, and he's a, he's a great dad. Uh, I know his family, his, you know, his wife and his two daughters. And he's, he's just a, just a nice, all around nice guy. So yeah, we get along. I, I'm not sure how it would work if you didn't get along. We spend a lot of time yeah. training beforehand, a couple years. For us, it was yeah. more like four or five years. And so that's how you get to know each other. You know the hot buttons, you know that what the triggers the other guy has. And so you sort of try to avoid those, right? We don't want, want to instigate con conflict. So uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty symb symbiotical. I do the opposite with Marjorie's hot buttons. You yeah, know, that's right. Do you think, you see, you know, for everything I read about you, you seem like an incredibly humble person, which I sure as hell would not be if I were you. But so this is a tough question, I think, for someone who has that approach. What do you think you understand better about all of us than we understand yeah. about ourselves? Looking back. Who haven't been where you've Earth. been. There must be some things, Sonny Williams. Um, I think the one thing I, I, I really get from being up here is uh, we take life a little too seriously on Earth. Um, we get aggravated with some of the littlest, stupidest things uh, that really we shouldn't because this is our one big planet. This is our one big place that we live. You know, we don't really know if anybody else lives anywhere else. So we really should all just get along. And it's, it's amazing to me when you look down at some of the areas where there's, you know, potentially some conflict or even just think back to home about traffic and people getting aggravated. It's so silly, honestly. We, uh, we all just live on this planet and we all should just get along. We can find can compromise. We can find middle ground if you just stop, stop getting, and listen. You're getting a lot of applause from the audience here, Sonny Williams. Uh, we have a, a, a texter who's watching on YouTube and wants to know uh, how you're affected by solar flares and whether 
you saw the Northern Lights, which we, oddly enough, were able to see here some a few days ago, some of us, in, in Boston. What's the deal there, Sonny? Well, Jim, why didn't you go see it? I'm curious because it was incredible. And of course we saw it up here. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> oh, you know, we, we see the, you know, the Northern Lights and the Aurora in the, in the Southern Hemisphere as well um, when, when we have solar activity. And just recently, of course, we had this huge um, coronal uh, CME. Um, but anyway, I can't remember the acronym. Mass ejection. Mass ejection. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> um, coronal mass ejection, which caused this amazing aurora. Um, usually it's, you know, green, but we started to see some red, you know, not too long ago, but that thing was just incredible. It lit up our night sky with red and green. It was just awesome. And I, I see the pictures from the ground. I had asked my friends and family to send them this way, too, because I wanted to see what you guys were looking at. And just spectacular. Um, so, yeah, th there are some dangers with all of that, of course. You know, uh, things that are, you know, there's radiation coming from the sun, right? So we have an increased risk of radiation while we're up here. We try to stay protected as much as we can. The space station has protective coating on it and stuff. But we do get a little bit increased amount of radiation than folks uh, on Earth, of course. Last thing for me, which really relates to the first thing I asked you about science, and I know you only have a minute left, Sonny Williams. The NASA budget as a percentage of the overall federal budget is lower than it's been in past years. Can you make the case for why NASA and what you and your colleagues do is so important to the people of this country? Well, you, you alluded to it in the very beginning. It's just the importance of science, the importance of asking questions, the importance of trying to know and understand things that maybe we don't know now. We don't even know really what questions to ask. And I think when we live up in space or try to build systems and processes for being uh, somewhere other than Earth's gravity, it makes you think outside the box. It makes you think and expand your horizons, ask the questions, and really try to find the answers. And it, I think it brings all of us together, you know, back to the whole human aspect of our planet, um, we're all asking those questions. We're all here together, and we all owe each other uh, that the courtesy of that, the, those answers and those questions. We'd love to meet you when you and Butch Wilmore are back in uh, early next year, so we hope you'll yeah. do that. And we really can't thank you enough for your time. And today. I want to mention, Sonny, Sonny, that we have a texter who just said, listening to Commander Sonny, Sonny, Sonny Williams was amazing. It made me feel proud of her and proud to be an American. So thank you very, very much for being with us. We so much appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. We have a little gravity-free little little stuffed animal there, right? Safe return, Sonny Williams. Thanks, great to Sonny. meet you. Thanks. Yeah. That's a, it's, it's a wild cat. You, you guys take care. We'll see you when we get back home. Station is used in ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you, Boston Public Radio. Please enjoy the fall foliage for all of us here in Houston and on the space station. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.